Norman, you mentioned the theater. Uh, when exactly did you get your start on Broadway and in what? And how did you go from your career in Broadway, the Federal Theater, the Mercury Theater? What was the sequencing of that? Are you asking when I started? Yes. That's 80 years ago this year. I started with the Galleon in 1932 down at the City Preparatory Theater on 14th Street and 6th Avenue in New York. And the standards that she inoculated within us at that time have, I am proud to say, remained with me ever since. Because she had a, what was to this day, in my view, the finest repertory theater we ever had in this country. This theater down on 14th Street uh, was a 19th century theater. And Booth had played there, Majeska had played there, the, the, the Nance O'Neill, the greatest stars had played there. It was before New York Theater District moved up to Broadway in 42nd Street. It was down on 14th Street. And we started there. And from there, I, I went eventually to the Federal Theater with uh, Joe Losey, who became a very prominent picture director, and uh, which I'm sure you've all seen, particularly the Harold Pinter plays, which he did on, on screen. But we were doing something there called The Living Newspaper, uh, which was the dramatization of major events happening in America at that time, at the time of the Depression. And we did a play on the farmers, we did a play on the history of labor and courts, we did a play on TVA. And when I finished there, after Losey left, I left, and I left because Orson Welles and John Houseman, who had also been on the WPA, they elected to leave at that time and form a theater called the Mercury Theater, which is famous to this day. And they formed the Mercury Theater, and the first production was Julius Caesar, in which I played, and then we did Shoemaker's Holiday, in which I played. Julius Caesar was Orson Welles' breakthrough in the theater, although he had scored a great hit as a director, of uh, what was known as the Black Macbeth. It was Macbeth set at the time of Toussaint L'Overture in 1814, I believe, in Louisiana. And uh, Orson had done it, as I say, as if all the superstitions of Haiti and voodoo and so forth. So the three witches, for example, of Macbeth, were voodoo and very dark and all tom-toms, the whole thing. The play opened and the notices the next day were very good, except for one, Percy Hammond of the New York Herald Tribune. John Houseman, who was the producer, went to the theater, it was the Lafayette Theater in Harlem in New York, went to the theater to check on uh, the box office. And while there, it was the middle of the day, he heard boom, 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 boom. Seemed to be coming from the basement of the theater. So he went down there, and there were the two voodoo teams. They actually were enemies, one of the other, but for this particular act, they joined together in common boom, 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 Percy Hammond, boom, 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 Percy Hammond, the one bad notice, boom, 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 Percy Hammond. Percy Hammond died the next day. So for all of you, I warn you. Wasn't Orson going to bring you out to Hollywood originally for Heart of Darkness? 
was he, he brought the company to Hollywood. Right. That's how I came out here in 1939 right. with the heart of darkness, and uh, the studio wouldn't make it, so my wife and I went back to New York, mm -hmm. and then I was brought out again by Hitchcock, mm -hmm. and that was a major factor in my life. And Hitchcock, we did Saboteur, and, and then I did Spelldown with it. And uh, eventually, Hitch did make me a producer on the television show. Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and then became the Alfred Hitchcock Hour. And I started as an associate producer on it with that wonderful lady, Joan Harrison, who was the producer, yes. and who taught me how to be a producer. She was great. We just show, ran a couple of her films. We just ran Phantom Lady. Exactly. Oh, we, we, we brilliant. And then we've shown here before, right, the Pink Hearts. Tell us a little bit about what Joan Harrison was like. I know we know she was married to Eric Ambler and was a brilliant producer, but what was she like? Uh, Joan Harrison was very beautiful. And uh, thank goodness I was married at the time, and so I could keep my mind on business. <laughs> and uh, she, she uh, uh, was very bright, very beautiful, used to come to the studio dressed so beautifully and done so beautifully, but not overdressed, not flashy. It was absolutely tastefully perfect for studio work. I mean, just great. She had come to this country, she was brought here by Hitchcock. When he came over to do his first picture was Rebecca. And she came with him, she was one of the writers, she had been his secretary, and she became one of the writers on the picture. And she started out as associate producer on the series, and Hitch then made her the producer. And she knew everything about anything should be done on production, but above all, she knew script from her days of writing for Hitch, and she thought, credit, I believe, on Rebecca and on another Hitchcock picture as a writer. And then later, as you have shown, produced brilliantly. And I learned from her how you deal with the actors, how you deal with the production department, all of whom were madly in love with her. They would come in and sit and gape at her as they talked about sets. <laughs> and then, uh, as time went on, she then met Eric Ambler and decided, and they got married, and she felt she wanted to withdraw more. So it was that time that I became the executive producer because she wanted to do less work. But she was so knowledgeable, and as I said a little earlier, it was from her I learned to be a producer. Your, your work on Alfred Hitchcock is so brilliant. I mean, in addition to the producing some of the uh, seminal episodes like The Jar, Man from the South with Peter Laurie and Steve McQueen and The Lighter and The Fingers, did you, do you find, did you like producing better than directing or was it a financial thing or how did that work for you? All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> Well, the financial thing was very good, very necessary, because as an actor, you have a rather erratic career. <laughs> but I've been asked, what was my favorite thing, acting, producing, or directing? And the answer to that is the medium. What medium are you working in? If you are, and my favorite of all was acting in the theater. The reason for that is that you had communication, an amazing thing happening if things were going right, with the audience. The relationship of an actor to the audience in live theater is an extraordinary thing, particularly to the actor. And I hope for the audience, if all is going well. That was my favorite medium. So for acting, it was a theater. For Directing, it was directing in films, because you're telling the story. The director may not have written the story, 
but he tells the story. And so you have that sense of telling a story and that was very satisfactory. For producing, it's television. Producing television. Because when you produce television, as we did with the Hitchcock show, and as I did with the Hollywood Television Theater, you have the whole arc of beginning at the beginning of the season and going to the end of the season, and you have all this material that you form a whole series of entertaining an audience. And you have the whole arc of that as a producer. And you have the control of that as a producer because you put in all the elements. But if the most satisfactory personally was acting in the theater, because those experiences are the deepest emotional ones for me.